Hello students, so today we are going to learn a new topic that is nutrition in living organism, chapter 4. Now in this chapter, we are going to learn about different animal species which require different types of nutrition. Also in the present animation slide, you can see various animals right from birds in air and in water, the animals on the land and on the tree, right? Now, what are the contents which we are going to learn in this chapter that is nutrition, autotrophic plants, transport system in plants, biological fixation of nitrogen, symbiotic nutrition, heterotrophic plants, insectivorous plants, saprophytic plants, nutrition in animals, types of nutrition in animals that is holozoic nutrition, saprozoic nutrition and parasitic nutrition. So towards the right you can see animation again where you can see different animals present in nature. And over here one more animation which shows how the plants prepare their food that is in the presence of sunlight with carbon dioxide and water as raw material with chlorophyll the carbohydrates and oxygen is evolved. Now, coming to the introduction part of nutrition. The first point, some life processes go on continuously in living organism. Substances which are digested and assimilated for obtaining energy and for the growth and health of our body are called foodstuff. Now, as we know, the living organism is present and the life goes on continuously. Now, the foods which is taken up by these animals are digested and assimilated in the body which uh, helps in providing energy for their growth and health. We get several types of nutrition from foodstuff. So various foodstuff or different types of foods gives different types of nutrition. The nutrients can be classified into two types namely macronutrients and micronutrients. The term macro means large or which is required in more quantity whereas micro means it is required in small quantity but it is essential. If uh, it is not present in, even in small amount then it can cause various health disorders. So both macro and micronutrients are essential. Nutrients like carbohydrate, proteins and fats are required in large quantity. These are called macronutrients. So which are the macronutrients? Three major ones, carbohydrate, proteins and fats. Whereas minerals and vitamins are required in very small quantity. They are called micronutrients. So the micro are the one which is required in small quantity but essential which are minerals and vitamins. Now if you see this uh, image over here we can very clearly observe what it actually is forming that is all the food stuff fruits vegetables they are taking the shape of a DNA structure right because if you are having healthy food and all the micro and macronutrients are present in proper quantity then our DNA our gene will also be strong and we will be healthy. Moving further, I uh, added one more image over here, nutrition and immunity for children 10 years and younger and even it can be uh, counted for about 10 years also. Okay, that is till the age of 15 to 17 as well. Why? Because all these vitamins and minerals are equally important for all the children right from 0 to 18. Now, uh, this particular chart was given by British Nutrition Foundation. So, that's why I added over here which gives vitamin A where it is found the importance. Same way vitamin B6, vitamin B12, vitamin C, vitamin D, copper, palate, iron, selenium and zinc. So, uh, copper, folate, iron, selenium and zinc, these are the important minerals. There are many more minerals but these impo important vitamins and minerals are essential for our body. So, I am not going into the detailed part which is given here which you can read but remember the important vitamins and minerals which is essential in our food which makes us healthy and stronger. Now, coming to the nutrition part that is going into detailed aspect, the first point that is 
the process of taking in and using food which takes place in living organism is called nutrition so what is the definition for nutrition process of taking in and using the food which takes place in living organism or in fact we can say all the living organism require food which they take in and though that food is utilized by the body for various purpose by breaking down the food digestion absorption assimilation and it is uh, uh, useful for the growth of the organism further why the need for nutrition first to supply energy required for doing work right then growth and development of the body otherwise growth development will be reduced third to replace the damaged cells and repair the cell now if i give a small example now while playing you fall down or get injured sometimes now though the injured part if you see after sometimes the new skin or the new uh, layer may form right how this is formed because of the nutrition which you are taking in which helps to replace the damaged cells and repair the tissue which is affected to fight disease which is very much important even in the present pandemic situation where uh, you have to see that you are having good proper nutrition which can overcome any type of infection in the body so if our immune system is strong we can overcome any type of disease further autotrophic nutrition and heterotrophic nutrition based on the two types some organism can produce their own food and thus nourish themselves this is called autotrophic nutrition so what is autotrophic nutrition the animals or species or organisms in fact we can say which can produce their own food so here when you say own food it is basically the plants and animals which feed on the plants so plants they produce own food as we saw in the previous uh, slide is second slide how by photosynthesis plants prepare their food whereas heterotrophic more commonly the animals some organisms depend on other organisms plants or animals for their food this is called heterotrophic nutrition the term hetero means different or the one which depends on other for food moving further autotrophic plants plants also need food for their growth so as we know uh, animals need food so as plants to prepare the food by photosynthesis so they can produce their own food with the help of sunlight and chlorophyll plants make their food in their leaves using water and nutrients from the soil and carbon dioxide from the air so that means plants require what sunlight that is the energy then carbon dioxide which is already present in the air and water which they obtain from soil through the roots in presence of chlorophyll which is in the leaf they prepare their food and they release oxygen and carbohydrate that is food is produced so this process is called photosynthesis now if i just give an example you know what is this chlorophyll actually so we can relate uh, like our kitchen where the food is prepared the gas stove where the food is cooked so chlorophyll or chloroplast present in the leaf is like a gas stove where the ingredients like carbon dioxide and water which is utilized in presence of the sunlight that is the energy or we can say as gas the food is prepared that is the carbon dioxide and along with that oxygen is released so you can see here the reaction carbon dioxide plus water giving you food and oxygen in presence of sunlight and chlorophyll in the leaf so the food is nothing but glucose so chemical reaction 6 co2 co2 that is carbon dioxide plus 6 h2o h2o as we know it is water and food or glucose which is c6h12o6 formula for glucose and oxygen is released that is o2 now further plants convert light energy into chemical energy and store it in the form of food now what is this light energy the energy obtained from the sunlight and that it is utilized to prepare the food that is glucose which is converted to the chemical energy 
water minerals and salt are absorbed by roots from the soil the stem transport them up to the leaves so as we know the root absorb water and minerals and it transport through the stem to the upper part of the plant that is mainly the leaves the leaves have microscopic openings called stomata means the small pores on the leaf which is not visible to us but it is present on the leaves through which they take in the carbon dioxide from the air so the carbon dioxide is present the atmosphere is taken through the stomata and same way the water vapor is evaporated by transpiration also the oxygen is released again through the stomata the chloroplast present in the leaves contain chlorophyll which absorb sunlight helping to convert carbon dioxide and water into food so carbon dioxide water uh, as i mentioned carbon dioxide from the air water from the soil is taken up and which is converted into food oxygen is given out in this process so oxygen is evolved besides leaves photosynthesis takes place in some other parts like green stems too as they contain chlorophyll now uh, as we know leaves are green in color so the uh, photosynthesis takes place in the leaves that is in the chlorophyll but even the other parts of the plant if it is green in color for example the stem and even to some extent the bud or uh, the seeds if they are green in color they contain chlorophyll if they contain chlorophyll then they can carry out photosynthesis so you can see here i put uh, one image and one animation image the so first image you can see the leaf inside which the chlorophyll is present the chlorophyll has got various parts just for your additional knowledge stroma inner membrane outer membrane and thylakoid which is present inside the chlorophyll now here you can see how the uh, uh, process takes place inside the chlorophyll so you can imagine uh, the leaf is very thin but so much activity is going on inside the leaf as well so it is a ultra structure of chlorophyll or uh, chloroplast that is what is happening inside the chlorophyll or the chloroplast so you can see that it is a double layered membrane inner membrane and the outer membrane and inside which you have got the thylakoid membrane and uh, here you can see the formation of sugar molecules so uh, you can see it by different colorations uh, for there is blue colored um, balls the red colored one which is sugar molecules so it shows the different component or activity taking place inside the chloroplast okay now transport system in plants now as we know plants carry out photosynthesis also water is taken up through the roots and through the stems it pass now but which part of the uh, root which part of the stem even that is of great importance right now so moving on to the point the transport system of plant consists of xylem and phloem so these two are the important components which are those xylem and phloem which helps in conduction of food and water moving further next point the xylem transports mineral and water from the root to all the aerial parts of the plant that means the water which is absorbed from the root which is passed on to various parts of the plant is through which component that is xylem and xylem they uh, uh, take up the water and in the water the minerals are already dissolved in it and they uh, reach out to various parts of the plant or upper part of the plant which is mainly the leaf now the phloem the phloem transports the food that is glucose from the leaves to other parts of the plants where it is either consumed or stored now if you see phloem what does it do transports food now also the place is opposite xylem from bottom to top and phloem from top to bottom or basically from the leaves to various parts of the plant right and phloem transports food that is glucose which is prepared in the leaf further though the plants have a transport system they do not have a separate digestive or excretory system now the term digestive and excretory is usually used in animals right 
so they don't have any digestive excretory but the system in plants is a transport system as we just said xylem and phloem further the plants produce carbohydrate by the process of photosynthesis as we learned in the previous slide carbohydrates are made from carbon hydrogen oxygen so remember how the carbohydrate is prepared from three main components carbon hydrogen oxygen a simple way to remember carbon c hydrogen h oxygen o c h o okay then proteins are made from carbon hydrogen oxygen and nitrogen that means here c h o these three are there but along with that n is there what is that n nitrogen clear so there is one additional component in protein that is nitrogen uh, which helps in the formation of proteins so we can say that is a difference in the components or elements present in both carbohydrate and proteins further air contains gaseous nitrogen however plants cannot utilize gaseous nitrogen it needs to fix that is convert into compounds fixation of nitrogen occurs by biological and atmospheric methods now nitrogen but where does this nitrogen obtain mainly nitrogen is present in the gaseous form in the atmosphere along with oxygen carbon dioxide right so this cannot be taken directly it has to be converted so this conversion takes place either biologically or by atmospheric method or by both method which we'll be learning further so here you can see a image which is there in a text as well showing right from the bottom the water which is absorbed along with minerals through the root where xylem and phloem is present also by coloration you can easily identify which part it is and uh, here the stem which again takes the xylem and phloem component further you can see the inner component of the stem which again contains xylem and the phloem then further uh the leaf part where again xylem and phloem is present so you can see the pink colored coloration is for xylem whereas the blue for phloem now how this biological fixation of nitrogen takes place so i have put image as well as animation both for your better understanding now two different types of microorganisms can bring about biological nitrogen fixation so mainly there are two there can be more than two but two more important more common which helps in biological nitrogen fixation now firstly you have to understand what is biological means right you know you might have heard physics chemistry biology right now term biology means life bio means life logy means study study about life so here biological means the living organism which helps to fix nitrogen okay now root nodules of leguminous plants contain the rhizobium microorganism now what is this root nodules that's why i put the image over here leguminous plant if you see the root they got small small ball like structure or which is nothing but nodules so these nodules contain the microorganism which one rhizobium which helps in the atmospheric nitrogen convert the atmospheric nitrogen these microorganisms absorb atmospheric nitrogen and convert into nitrate a compound which is utilized by the plant microorganisms like azobacter are present in the soil so there are bacteria present in the soil also which helps in conversion of the atmospheric nitrogen so here second image as has shown the atmospheric nitrogen which comes to the soil or absorbed through the soil then taken up by the plants then third you can see another animation image uh, where you can see how the ru uh, particular species of microorganism how it enters or present in the root and in the root how they help in the fixation so you can see here the image where the roots are present the dotted structures are nothing but the uh, nitrogen molecules and the microorganisms which are present helps in the conversion part so now you can see very clearly the highlighted part how the root part is present and in which the nitrates are converted from nitrogen so how the conversion takes place so they are also convert 
uh, atmospheric nitrogen into nitrate that is by the azobacter. Now, next is what symbiotic nutrition. What is symbiotic means? Here we can say friends. Which friends? The two friends which always help each other. Right? I hope all of you will be helping your friends or they will be helping you. So, here also symbiotic action takes place between different organism which is called a symbiotic and here it is helping in nutrition. So, symbiotic nutrition. In some cases, two or more than two different types of plants live together to fulfill the needs of nutrition, protection, support, etc. with each other's help. This type of nutrition is called symbiotic nutrition. So, as I give simple example, like friends, you help each other, right? So, here also there are species in plants or animals which help each other either for nutrition or for protection or for support, right? Which we see always see in our friends or we do help our friends, right? So, some fungi grow around the roots of some other plants. Now, just now as you saw in case of rhizobium which is present in leguminous plant. So, it gets accommodation, place to live and in turn it helps the plants in conversion of atmospheric nitrogen into nitrates. These plants supply nutrients to fungi and in turn the fungi supplies minerals and water to the Plant. So, here there is a symbiotic association shown between fungi and other plants, mainly you can say algae. Some fungi and algae live together. The fungi which provides water, minerals as well as shelter to the algae. In return, the algae provides food to the fungi. What is that? Lichen or lichen as we spell it is an example of symbiosis between algae and fungi. So, I put the image over here where algae and fungi, they live together, help each other. How they help? Fungi provides water and minerals and shelter to algae. Whereas, algae provides food to fungi. As we know, algae is mainly green in color. If they are green in color, they will have chlorophyll. If they have chlorophyll, they help in photosynthesis and if they carry out photosynthesis, they will prepare food that is glucose or carbohydrate and that is utilized by the fungi okay and here you can see the animation of the symbiosis between algae and fungi how they grow slowly and steadily on a wood or a large wooden log okay now uh, again the in the text also there is given additional information do you know Atmosphere, atmospheric fixation of nitrogen, lightning or thunderbolts occur in the rainy season. This causes atmospheric nitrogen and oxygen to react with each other to form nitric oxide. That is NO which is again oxidized to form nitrogen dioxide. So, now here by atmospheric nitrogen or by atmosphere fixation, nitrogen is fixed. The nitrogen dioxide dissolves in rainwater and is converted into nitric acid, which is HNO3, which gets added in the soil along with the rainwater. The plants use this nitrogen for growth. That is how the atmospheric nitrogen is fixed. So, here you can see how the lightning or during rainfall the oxygen or uh, the nitrogen which is dissolved uh, form the nitric oxide uh, they uh, form nitrogen dioxide or the nitrogen dioxide get dissolved in rain water they reach the ground that is soil and it is absorbed by the fixation of the bacteria and here again I have showed a chart which shows the nitrogen cycle which we will be learning in higher class. That is, the uh, nitrogen fixation takes place by lightning as you just saw in this uh, for, uh, animation image. Here you can see nitrogen fixing bacteria fixing this atmospheric nitrogen forming NS. What is NS3? Ammonia uh, forming again this nitrifying bacteria converting into nitrite. Uh, also the denitrification bacteria again converts into nitrogen. So, it again goes back to the nature along with ammonia produced by the waste or excreta from the animals, cattle. Again, nitrification takes place uh, which is again a process to and fro. You can see the arrows means uh, NO2 forming uh, that is uh, forming nitrite or by the denitrifying uh, bacteria and again this forming back into nitrite. So, here 
uh, ammonia nitrite nitrate is again converted and again by denitrifying bacteria it goes back into the atmosphere just for your understanding this image i added over here now further heterotrophic plants now we come to the heterotrophic plants from the uh, nitrogen fixation that is by symbiosis and atmospheric nitrogen now what is heterotrophic plants again like heterotrophic animals certain plants are depend on another plants because they don't have chlorophyll right so the heterotrophic plants do not contain chlorophyll a yellow wire like leafless climber plant growing on on a bit tree the plants that grow on the body of other plants to obtain food are called parasitic plants for example lorenthus and cascata so as i mentioned the chlorophyll which is not present in certain plants that is heterotrophic plants so they require food so what they do they got yellow wire like uh, root or climber which uh, they grow around the plants uh, which does not have any leaf so they climb around the plant and they use the other plants food for their growth so act as a parasite on the plant so two examples as we learn over here lorenthus cascata due to the absence of chlorophyll the cascata is completely dependent on the host plant hence it is said to be completely parasite so here cascata is a plant species because of absence of chlorophyll completely throughout its lifespan they are depending on other plants so they are completely parasitic so i put the image of lorenthus which at times they may grow leaves at a certain stage as you can see here so they are not complete parasite whereas the cascata they don't have any leaf at all they are yellow white structure which curl around other plants and takes a nutrition of that particular plant so they are completely parasite now coming to insectivorous plant from heterotrophic plants now as you know when you use it of insectivorous that is insect eating plants earlier also you may have come across various species like uh, picture plant right so here you come across another species named as drosera so some plants feed upon insects to obtain nutrients these insectivorous plants generally grow in soil or water deficient in nitrogen compounds the plant body of drosera burmeni has flower like appearance so if you see this image i put the image of the scientist burman who actually identified it and the species drosera which is looks like a colorful plant or a flower so the insects they come in the search of nectar and when they sit on it because of the sticky substance present they get uh, attached to it and the leaves they curl over it and absorb the body fluid of this insect thereby uh, killing the insect so here it grows close to the ground its leaves are attractively pink or red in color with hairs at the margin that's how the insect get attracted droplets of a sticky substance found at the tip of the hair attract the insects because it appears like a nectar of the flower the scientist john s berman identified this plant in sri lanka in 1737 hence the plant is named after him that's why the name drosera burmeni usually uh, the name of the species or the plant is given on the scientist or the place where it is discovered right so this is a addition information whenever you see the names of the plant the second part of the name is usually where it is found or which place it is identified or the person who has identified the plant now coming to the uh, next step there is saprophytic plants now what are this plants which obtain food from dead and decaying bodies of other organisms are called saprophytic plants so now you know what is saprophytic the animal plants which feed on dead and decaying bodies of animals or other organisms various types of fungi like mushroom and yeast are saprophytes so which are the example mushroom and yeast next point fungi secrete digestive enzyme on their dead remains to digest or break down the carbon compounds they contain so this fungus secretes certain enzymes which helps on in breakdown of the uh, 
the dead remains of the organism. The, the resulting solution is absorbed to obtain nutrients. So here I added an image of saprophytic plant. So here you can see mushroom, different species of mushroom which acts as a saprophyte. And here I put two animation images, the examples given here. One is yeast. So how the yeast keeps on reproducing by budding. And here you can see a mushroom species which is growing on the dead decay matter. Moving further, again little bit of information which is given, always remember, food gets spoiled due to some fungi, some fungi causes disease or illness, why? Some have medicinal pro properties. Now, if I give you a small example, at home, uh, if you bring bread, if it is kept open, after a few days or after the expiry date, the white layer forms on the bread, which is nothing but a fungus. So, we have to throw that. If by mistake, if we eat the food which has fungus growth on it, it can cause severe abdominal pain or stomach ache or can cause illness. But some fungus are useful also. So, they are useful as well as Harmful. Yeast and some mushroom are useful. Now, yeast, uh, we might have heard at home, mother using it for fermentation, right? Uh, for fermenting in case of uh, bread or in case of uh, dokla or idlis and dosas, all the fermented uh, products where yeast is added to it. Mushroom. Also, there are certain mushroom dishes which are very tasteful and also nutritious. So, yeast is used in fermentation process and for making bread. Mushroom are rich source of iron and vitamin. So, the mushroom which are healthy, they contain iron and vitamins. So, I just added a chart just for additional information. Some fungal disease which is caused in human because of fungus. So, just a list of the name which is put over here. Uh, poisonous or edible. Now, what is poisonous means? Which, which is poisonous, which can cause harm. Edible, which can be consumed. So, here the poisonous one, the name is what? Destroying angel mushroom. So, this one, why it is called angel? Because very white and very pure. So, but it is what? Destroying angel mushroom. And the second one, edible puff mushroom. Edible means which can be consumed. So, I put two images of fungus which are harmful and the other half fungus that is aspergillus. Now, here I put the chart which is there in the text which shows role of nutrients and effects in the deficiency of plants. Now, these are important uh, nutrients even from the exam point of view. The nutrient, what is the function or what deficiency it can cause. So, quickly going into the chart, nitrogen, important components, protein, chlorophyll and cytoplasm means where it is required. Whereas, deficiency can cause retarded stunted growth, yellowing of leaves. So, if you, are, if you have plants at home, if it is becoming yellow in color quickly and does not grow, what does that mean? Nitrogen is less in it. Then phosphorus, conversion of light energy into chemical energy. Uh, what is the deficiency? Early leaf fall, late flowering, slow growth of roots. Then potassium, necessary for metabolic activities, for functioning of the plant. Uh, deficiency can cause weak stem, wilting of leaf, failure to produce carbohydrate, that is the food which is produced by the plant. Then magnesium, production of chlorophyll. Uh, a deficiency will cause slow retarded growth like in case of nitrogen, yellowing of leaves. Iron, again production of chlor chlorophyll similar to magnesium and yellowing of leaf, that is deficiency. Manganese, production of main plant hormone. Even the hormones are produced in plant which helps in their growth and development. If not, then retarded growth, spotted leaves. Then zinc, production of hormones and their uh, intermediates. Uh, what is the deficiency? Retarded growth and yellowing of leaves. Moving further, now from plants we come to animals, so nutrition in animals. This concept refers to the body's need for nutrition, nutrients, mode of ingestion of food and its use in the body. So here what we are going to learn is about the uh, importance of nutrient, uh, how they are taking in the food that is ingesting and how the body utilizes it. So nutrition 
necessary for various activities of body are obtained from food so food is important source they are supplied to various part of the body through blood so whatever we eat when i say eat all the good nutritious balanced diet when we eat it is broken down this is, uh, that is after ingestion it is digested broken down absorption assimilation unwanted things are excreted out so food that we consume does not mix with blood as it is so it does not happen directly it needs to convert into soluble forms that can easily mix in blood nutrient in animals involves various step from ingestion to digestion they are as follows so there are five steps so you can learn one by one what is the first step ingestion this food is taken in the body that is what we eat through the mouth digestion conversion of food into simple soluble forms absorption transfer of soluble food to the blood fourth assimilation what is assimilation utilization of this absorbed food by the cells and tissues for energy production growth and repair fifth ejection what is ejection removal of waste product and undigested food from the body okay now types of nutrition in animals so we have seen saprophytic heterotrophic in plants so here in case of animals first is holozoic amoeba does not have organs like hands and mouth as we have seen amoeba right it is unicellular means only one cell uni means one it can take in food through any part of the surface of its unicellular body so it can take in food through any part of the body because there is no particular part as mouth it surrounds the food particle from all these sides to take it into the cell after that it digests the food with the help of different enzymes undigested food is left behind as the amoeba removes or moves further with the help of pseudopodia now amoeba as this does not have mouth so it engulf or uh, turns around or from all these side to the food takes in absorbs it and whatever things are there it leaves behind and it moves further with the help of their false foot which is called as what pseudopodia which is leg like but not the true leg or the true uh, limbs we can say in unicellular animals like amoeba euglena paramecium etc all these steps of nutrition occur within the unicellular body what does that mean uh, uni means as it all one so the one cell or the single cell helps in digestion nutrition all things in the a unicellular animal in the next slide you can see the images of amoeba which you already might have seen also i added euglena and paramecium further insects have mouth parts for ingestion of food means insects there are many insects you might be knowing around fly flea mosquitoes but all have got mouth parts for taking in the food for example insect like cockroach and grasshopper which nibble have jaws like mouth parts so they bite and nibble butterflies suck the food with the tube like process as they collect nectar from the flower then mosquitoes and bed bug use a needle like mouth part to pierce and a tube like mouth part to suck the blood or body fluid so mosquito bed bug whenever they bite we can feel the pinch right because they are very pointed they pierce through our skin absorb the blood and the other fluids which again you can see all these uh, insects and unicellular animal in the next slide now you can see on the first part unicellular species so here you can see amoeba see how slowly it is moving around if you observe closely and slowly it turns around the food which is present and it takes inside okay see the movement which is moving forward in all the directions so all this part which is moving we can see as the false foot then euglena it has got a single flagellum tail like part which helps in moving here paramecium even if you see paramecium inside the vacuoles are present different parts organelles are present uh, parts are present which helps in their digestion process then insects cockroach you can see here nibbling as the words used they have got different mouth parts grasshopper they are eating caterpillar see how they are holding to the caterpillar and nibbling them butterfly sucking the nectar mosquito and bed bug piercing their pointed needle like mouth part into the human skin 
Now, coming to the next type, that is according to the type of food, animals can be classified as herbivorous. That is, herbivorous use plants directly as a food. Example, grazing animals or granivorous, seed eaters or frugivorous fruit. Grazing, all of you know, cattle, cow, buffalo, uh, goat, granivorous, thus, uh, specifically the birds which eat the grains or seeds. Frugivorous, the birds which eat fruits. Then uh, again, the next slide you can see all the species of granivorous, frugivorous, etc. Second, carnivorous. Animals that depend on other animals for food are called carnivorous. Carnivorous are indirectly dependent on plants for food. Examples are animals that feed on herbivorous, that is predators. Animals that feed on insects, insectivorous. So we have a carnivorous species which depend on other animals. Then third type is what? Omnivores. Animals that obtain food from both plants and animals. That is the species or organism which eat plant as well as animals uh, are called omnivores. What are the examples? Monkey, chimpanzee, human. Scavengers obtain their food from dead bodies of animals like vulture, crow, hyena. Which are what scavengers means wherever dead animals are lying, so they these uh, hyena, crow, vulture they feed on them. Decomposers some microbes which obtain their food by decomposing the dead bodies of organisms or other materials. So just now as a fungi, they uh, or other bacteria they decompose the dead organisms. Okay, so all these five types which are those herbivorous, carnivorous, omnivorous, scavengers and decomposers and remember their examples which you can see all the animation image now in the next slide. Here you can see herbivorous, the granivorous bird, the birds which eat grains or seeds. Here you can see bird eating a fruit, how it is gulping, right? Then Carnivorous cheetah catching on deer, pangolin. Pangolin is insectivorous. They are huge bodied, but if you see the tongue which is very long coming out and catching the insect with a sticky tongue, you can see how long it is. Then omnivorous chimpanzee, monkeys, human, or bear. You can see bear catching the fish over here. Then scavengers, vulture, and crow. Both are having same food, sharing the food over here, right? Then hyena, which is uh, again scavenger, feeding on dead uh, animals. Then decomposer, bacteria and fungi. You can see here the fungus are decomposing a dead rat. See how quickly it is getting decomposed. Now, here I added one more image just for an understanding of what different animals feed upon. Okay, just quickly go through black bear, how it is berries, nuts, honey, bees, insects, squirrel, fruit, nuts, insect, eggs, robin, that is a bird, berries and worms, hawk, bird, snake, rodents, rodents means rats, war, warthog, that is uh, like pig, wild pig, root, mushroom, eggs, dead animal, shark, they feed on other small fishes, snail, fruit and leaves, jaguar, like cheetah, monkeys and antelopes, goat, grass and flower, crocodile, buffalo, birds, giraffe, leaves, rabbit, vegetables, cow, grass, spider, fly. So you can see all different animals feeding on different species. So here again one more chart showing the carnivorous animal which uh, feed only on other animals that is flesh or meat. Herbivorous which feed only on plants, grass. Omnivore, an organism that eats plants and other animals. Now, just a few more images for what you learned. Anteater, uh, the example given in the text. You see, uh, if you observe carefully, the animation image anteater, there's a small baby on the back. And if you observe, the mouth is thin and long. Why? It eats only insects. Okay. Then you can see bobcat. It's you can say uh, snow cat. In fact, the body is slightly huge uh, and covered with fur or hair uh, completely because of the cold climatic condition. And another species called as woodmanger, like cat-like species. You can see the animation image and the picture both together. Okay. Now next is what. 
saprozoic nutrition some insects unicellular animal obtain the nutrition by absorbing the liquid organic material from the dead bodies of other animals or from the environment means they feed on liquid things or uh, other animals which are present in the environment or something fl fluid like part present in the environment so this is what saprozoic nutrition what are the example house fly and spider so you have seen house fly at home whenever there is something food spilled out you can see more flies around it then ant and spiders then parasitic nutrition by the name parasite means which uh, is harmful for the others like mosquitoes right so some animals depend upon other animals for food and also they harm them they can obtain the food only from animals on whom they depend this is called parasitic nutrition so they are dependent on other animals and particular type of animals where they can suck the body fluid uh, or depend on them some animals live on body surface of other animals and obtain their food by sucking their blood this is called ectoparasite means what they are present outside the body ecto means outside and some animals are called uh, and uh, ectoparasite for example louse bed bug tick so the mode of nutrition is ectoparasitic nutrition and the species are called as ectoparasite louse bed bug tick so you can see the image of louse or lice which are present on the hair tick they are mainly found on animal body cat dogs then uh, bed bug animals like tapeworm and roundworm live inside the body of other animals and obtain their food this is endoparasitic nutrition means present inside the body and these animals are called endoparasite which endo means inside so like you can see the example here tapeworm and roundworm so tapeworm or roundworm they usually enter our body uh, through food or water if the food or water contains eggs of these uh, worms or the larvae then they enter inside the body and start to use our body fluid and lastly thank you all of you hope this particular video helped you to learn the chapter thoroughly and also revise as and when you require so thank you all of you thank you students